We had on this island during the summer quite a settlement of very distinguished Negroes, like Harry T. Burley, the arranger of Negro spirituals, and Meta Warwick Fuller, a pioneer sculptor. And she had gone to France and studied and worked with Rodin and Ethel Waters, who was internationally known for her singing, and the Adam Clayton Powell family. All of those distinguished Negroes stayed at the Shara Cottage. That was the one place where these people of color could stay because they couldn't stay at the hotels because of the situation, the color situation. And I remember where we used to swim at the Highland Beach, that is over there near where we lived. I was with Harry T. Burley and Rita Warwick Fuller talking about my career and, and uh, Mita's career in France. And they both said, Lois, you know, you're not going to make it in this country. It's uh, true, you are very talented, but because of the situation, you're not going to be able to uh, have any success with your, your career. You're going to have to go abroad. And that was a great inspiration to the extent that I immediately set my goal to go to France to study. So it was in 1937. I went to France and studied on a fellowship at the Academy Julia. And when I got back to States, I went to 57th Street and he said, you're an excellent artist. Impressionism is excellent, but you're black, so we can't show your work. We can't exhibit your work. There was one gallery in Boston that gave me a first show. I couldn't really get into the major shows because of my color. So I shipped my work, put them in crates, sent them to the National Academy of Design, the Philadelphia Academy and uh, to major galleries, Chicago and all. Invariably, they were hung, but they never knew that Lois Jones was black. And uh, I felt to do that for a number of years until I made my niche. And then I let them know that who I was, really. They didn't know for many years. Right. And it, it was a shock. I mean, they just didn't think that a black artist, you know, could, could do that, that type of work. And if you could, I mean, they weren't going to give you a chance anyway. So that it was, hasn't been easy. Naturally, I was hurt, and I never let it affect my work. It, it would have uh, it'd been unfortunate if, if I had let it enter into what I was doing. And so it was that I was determined to continue. And finally, as I am today, I mean, I... Finally, I'm represented in the Metropolitan Museum, National Collection of American Art, and in the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., Brooklyn Museum. I mean, I'm hanging. I'm there. But uh, it hasn't been easy. By no means. I've had to have, keep a whole lot of my feelings within. Go to Martha's Vineyard at where... Frankly, where people are, it seems to me, friend, more friendly. Sometimes you'll be walking along the, the street in Vineyard Haven and somebody will say, good morning, nice day, isn't it? You don't even know them. I mean, but there's a certain warmth that I feel here that I didn't feel in those early days in Boston and, and in New York.